Finally tonight, building bridges across the generation gap and the technology divide. The NewsHour's Mary Jo Brooks has our report. Got it? Yeah. Yep. It's your workout for the day. <laughs> Twice a week, 24-year-old Courtney Kershaw and 89-year-old Dorothy Stone head out on errands. On the day we visited, there was a trip to the nail salon and the grocery store. What about applesauce? Did you like the applesauce we got? Kershaw works for a Denver-based concierge oh, okay. business called Capable Living, which provides services for senior citizens who live in their own homes. Fees start at $1,000 a month. Thank you. What's unique is that the employees are all young people, so-called millennials who were born at the end of the last century. The goal of the company is not only to provide services, but to build bridges between a generation obsessed with smartphones and selfies with one that was raised in an entirely different era. Some of my favorite things were you telling me about when you were my age and how you, you know, oh, yeah, fill up the car the... for 10 cents and go driving around all day. When I was her age, the war was going on, so it was sort of a different situation, too, as far as young girls were concerned. Anna Cavallari founded so. Capable Living five years ago, when she was just 20 years old. She now travels around the country speaking to young entrepreneurs and college students about the benefits and business opportunities for millennials who work with seniors. Most of my good friends never thought of this as a career like myself, and most of them are on completely different paths, but there is a huge opportunity for millennials to get into this space. And on the business side, the financial side, there is a large opportunity. Valeri points to demographic data that shows in 10 years, millennials will make up 75% of the workforce, while baby boomers will be retiring from their careers. She thinks it's just good business sense for young people to start developing services for this older generation. And it makes good life sense for the two groups to interact. Elders are able to pass down their experiences and their stories and they're relevant again and it's being relevant that gives them meaning and purpose. And I do believe that those younger, older connections are very, very important to us to grow as a society. This happens to be me when I was, I don't know, probably six months old or something You're really like that. Adorable. One of Cavallari's newest projects is to start a nonprofit cyber seniors program in Denver. She plans to model it after one in nearby Boulder, where high school volunteers work with seniors on computer and internet issues. Now what do I do after? Bruce McKenzie lives in the Fraser Meadows retirement community. I'm taking a class at the university called uh, Hip Hop 101, and I didn't know how to listen to the uh, rap songs that are on hip hop. And, and Brian showed me how to go to YouTube, which I never knew anything about. So I go to YouTube now and I can listen to all these rap songs for my class. And it's more word than picture. Mackenzie and other residents work with students from nearby New Vista High School once a week. Kevin Bunnell loves it. These young women and men are just delightful. They're bright. It makes me feel 10 years younger every time they come. And the students are equally enthusiastic. I'm just a high school student and here I am getting to connect these people who don't really know anything about technology and I have the power to connect them and it's really special feeling. I'm learning a lot from them and they're learning from me. I, I've actually found through this that I think I like older people more than I like younger people. <laughs> Elders and children have a very natural bond that we've lost um, through the Industrial Revolution and then even more with the information age. But I believe that the, you know, the technology that once displaced elders can now connect us again. Double tapping. Cavallari's latest project is to develop a smartphone app so millennials can interview, record, and preserve the stories of senior citizens. She hopes to begin a pilot program in two schools later this winter. I'm Mary Jo Brooks in Denver for the NewsHour.